705, and I'll call to order this meeting, uh, special meeting of the uh, Waterbury Select Board on Monday, October 30th, uh, 2023. Uh, I'd like to first uh, start just by recognizing the loss of uh, one of the pillars of uh, the village of Waterbury, Lefty Saya, passed away today, and uh, we'll all miss him deeply. Um, the first item on the agenda is uh, to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the agenda is approved. The consent agenda includes minutes from our last meeting on the 16th and a tobacco substitute endorsement uh, Landis Mexican Cuisine LLC uh, license. All in favor of the consent? Oh, do I have a motion for the consent agenda? I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Just, just a question. Shoot. What is tobacco substitute endorsement? I know it's not easy to pronounce. I know that. It's, um, um, <laughs> it's um, like e cigarettes, things of that nature. Oh, ease. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Consent agenda is approved as written. Next, we have the public uh, session. Uh, anyone that would like to address anything not on the warned agenda, please come forward. Uh, I'd ask to try to keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anything more, we'll put it on the agenda for the following meeting. All right. Hearing no, nothing on the public, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, informational meeting on the charter vote, which is due to take place on December 5th, 2023. Any Tom, presentation? Slide sorter and share the screen. Can I get over it? Oh, there you go. I'm sorry, what did you just ask you? Can you do the slide sorter view? Slide sorter. Uh, not that, sorry. The <laughs> 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 presentation. Which one? Presentation, yeah. Presentation. Presentation. Under slide show, you should. Slideshow, and then what are you asking for? Sorry, I haven't used PowerPoint in a while. Just try from current slide. Uh, the second one. From current slide. Beautiful. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Alyssa. So, just for a little background, I'll run through a short presentation with some numbers. Um, the one select. Sec. Just Karen, I'd hit escape. Make sure the zoom can see it. Escape. Yeah. Can the um, what's screen that we sharing? It's not in presentation mode for us. Yeah. So stop sharing. We're the working on it. Okay. I don't know what that means. Um. So just if you go back to the Zoom. Is it a share? Yep. And stop this share. That little red guy. Okay. And now we go back to the Zoom. Go back to Zoom. I mean, sorry, PowerPoint. Um, and can they see this? No, not yet. We have to get this in presentation mode and then share it. So, from current slide again, yeah, but it's not gonna help her. We should need to right. display setting. No, I just gave again. Swap presenter view. <laughs> just go back to Zoom. We should be able to select it. Is that better? No, oh, nope. <laughs> uh, starting Zoom again. Sorry. What is it? Share yeah. down the bottom? Yeah. And you did charter presentation? I did this one. Yeah. Yep. No, we can just do it like this. It's up we can do it like this. It's can fine. See it? Can Danny, see can it? you see it? Danny, can you see it? Yeah, we can see it. We still have the tool, like the um, slider on the left. That's okay. That matters. I mean, the, yeah. the, the slide is still <laughs> large and clear. All right. Okay. Just let me know if you need me to adjust something. Here. 
So I'll give a short presentation, a little background. Um, we first started talking about a charter, actually the very first time the select board met after town meeting day. Uh, we subsequently had six separate meetings uh, before this one uh, where we had the charter as a warned item. On April 3rd, the select board directed me to draft a proposed charter. Um, the next couple meetings after that, we talked about a framework and, and whether or not we wanted to have a simple charter or something that was a little more complex. Um, but in the end, the select board decided that we really didn't need to fundamentally reform town government. We just wanted to address a few specific items. Um, my first real charter presentation uh, was on August 21st. We did a lot of work in, in April and May, and then there was the flood. Uh, but in August, what I presented is substantially similar to what you're seeing today. We had a couple meetings in September and early October to essentially set dates um, about this presentation and the vote on December 5th. Um, short version is that we decided on two articles for the charter. Um, the first one is simply about the uh, manager's authority and uh, this has been a bit of a recurring issue and there's a couple positions in particular that it applied to this year. Um, state law says that the manager hires and fires um, all employees unless otherwise specified in state law, and there's a few that are specified in state law. Um, two great examples are that this year we filled both the planning director and the zoning director, and both those positions are specified in state law as having another hiring process. So in that case, um, the planning commission makes a recommendation to the select board about, about um, they essentially forward a name. The select board doesn't have to take that name. In this case, they did. But the manager is the daily supervisor. Um, a little bit awkward. Um, for the zoning director, it's especially awkward because while the planning director works closely with the planning commission, the zoning uh, director works with the development review board primarily. So you have a board making a recommendation to another board about an employee that they will not work with or supervise. So this simplifies that process. Um, makes it quite easy. Another position that this does not impact that's otherwise specified in state law is the library director who remains hired by the library board. Uh, so I wouldn't have that authority under this. That would, that's retained with them. Um, some of the other pieces um, we worked on together um, and they're really a reflection of our employee handbook and our past and current practice. Um, the second bullet uh, simply about the manager authorizing department heads to hire, appoint, uh, discipline, etc. A simple example is public works. Um, I have the ability to give that department head who's been here a long, long time the authority to make some of his own decisions, which is pretty reasonable given the size of a department, his experience. Um, with the new department head, I have the authority to say, let's, let's make some decisions together until you get a little more uh, time under your belt here. Um, and then the final piece um, to this clause is that we decided that department heads are too important and the select board should have some ability to weigh in on the hiring department head. Um, note that the, the sentence uh, simply says, shall be approved by the select board. It does not talk about the form of approval. So that depends on the manager and the select board and the relationship. So that could simply be that um, I call Roger and say, I want to hire this individual, and maybe it's an individual who's well known to the town, and Roger says, I think that's fine, I'll pull the board, and he calls me back an hour later and says, go ahead. It could be that it's done at a public meeting. Um, it's up to the manager and the select board to work that out at the time. Uh, the final piece I just want to say about this is, uh, all this language was reviewed by attorneys at the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and all of it was reviewed by an attorney named Jim Barlow, who's got a specialized practice in Vermont local government. Um, Karen, you want to go to the next one? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, this, the real meat of the charter is the local option tax, which we've again talked about um, almost the entire year here. Uh, and there's a couple of ways to warn that. In our case, we warned it as one item. You can, in fact, break it out and have separate questions about, uh, you can do a room and meals, you can, you can do the alcohol beverages, or the, or the total package, which we did. Um, identical to a lot of towns. Um, pretty ubiquitous at this point throughout Vermont. 
And I have not heard from a single business owner since we've talked about this that supposed this. Um, I haven't heard from a bunch who've been in favor of it, uh, but I haven't heard from anyone who opposed it. We can keep going one more. So just, just some details of what tax rates are now and, and how it would all change. Take all these numbers here and add 1%. Um, motor vehicles are something entirely different. So if you're spending 30 grand on a vehicle, uh, which is tough to do these days, you're not going to get hit with another 300 bucks there. Um, just like retail sales tax, groceries are exempt, prescription drugs, <laughs> uh, most clothing, some of the luxury items are not. Um, this would apply to all your internet purchases. The Amazons of the world now collect the tax and remit it uh, to the state, which sends it to us. And this would apply to your Vacasa, your Airbnbs. And we can go one more. <coughs> Just to get some context on, on what's happening. Um, so these are those categories. Um, you can go to the state website back to 2004, and you can show those categories. Um, on the far, maybe small, on the far left is alcohol. This is rooms, that's meals, and that's general retail sales. And alcohol is growing the fastest at almost 7%. Um, general retail sales is a slower at four. Anyone have an idea what our, what our tax levy has grown since 2004? What percentage? Any guesses? It's actually five. So a bunch of those categories are growing faster than your, than your property taxes have historically. And I think it'd be nice to, ta to tie some of the town's fiscal future with a revenue source that has a pretty high growth rate and, and doesn't impact your property taxes. Uh, you can go one more, please. Uh, this chart just breaks some of those things down by category. And all I do is I use the, I use the historical growth rates, um, cut them in half. So I'm not projecting 6.9% for alcohol in perpetuity. I cut everything in half uh, just to show what this would generate. So the projection is pretty conservative, 2025, 644,000. And the reason I use 2025 is the legal process. If this charter is indeed approved by the voters on December 5th, it has to go to the state legislature to be approved. If that happens, it then takes the tax department two quarters to implement it. So it wouldn't be paid until 2025. The town, in fact, wouldn't see its first check until about May of 2025, because it's collected and turned over quarterly, but there's, there's a process to that. Um, but our 2025 budget could, in fact, have this as a revenue source. Um, and then again, what would that mean in, in the tax rate if it was all done to reduce taxes in today's dollars? A little over eight cents. So pretty, pretty meaningful revenue source for the town um, for now and for the long term. Can you go one more, please? Mm -hmm. Sure. <coughs> uh, so what's that, that, what's that 8.26 cents on your house? It's <coughs> valued at $300,000, about 250 bucks. Um, I'm not pledging we can use all this money to reduce taxes, but I think it can be a component of how we can manage our budget, and I can talk about that going forward. You can keep going, Karen. Um, the select board um, back in August did, sorry, that's correct. Um, back in August did, in fact, adopt a policy, no, excuse me, October 2nd, adopted a policy on um, how to use the local option tax. Um, so four things uh, were the heart of that policy. The first is payment of existing debt. Um, the debt for the town is about $750,000 a year. Our total debt is about $5 million. And every year there are demands to issue more debt. Public Works has a history of essentially buying one big work truck a year. Um, the fire chief has already gotten select board approval, and, and on the warning for March, there will be a new fire truck at a cost of three, about $370,000. And he's got another truck that's um, 06, I believe. So he is thinking he'd like two trucks in the next few years, and they both have a big cost. Um, and Public Works tends to average $150,000, $200,000 a year. So managing debt. Um, gives us some real possibilities to, to manage the tax rate. Um, capital expenses, similarly, um, 
what the policy says is that any unspent local option tax funds are reserved. Um, and so if there's a planned capital project for the town, we can save cash. Um, years ago, and in fact until recently, I would never have advised that to any town in Vermont. Uh, one of the great um, levers you have in local government is your borrowing costs are really low, way lower than the private sector. And that's been the case for a long time. Um, many years, local government could borrow less than the rate of inflation, even when inflation was 2%. So I always thought Vermont towns were, were spendthrifts. And I thought that the last 20 years should have been the era of capital investment because it's the cheapest cash you'll ever get. Um, that era is, and you know, Waterbury actually did a lot of that. They're standing in a new building. Um, that era is over. Um, we can still borrow money a lot cheaper than the private sector, but the days of issuing 20-year debt at 2% are gone. Um, I don't know how long they're gone for, but they're certainly gone today. Um, you know, now rates are more like four to five. Um, for those of us that have mortgages, which is probably all of us, um, you know the difference a few points make um, on that monthly payment. Uh, no different for the town. Uh, we also talked about economic development, uh, community vitality efforts. That's a pretty broad bucket. Um, but I think it's brought intentionally because there's a lot of things that could fall into there. Um, a great example is next year there's an eclipse. And we've talked about that a little bit, but there's, we are being told from a lot of people um, in higher places that Vermont should expect a huge amount of visitors, something like half our population. Um, so we've got to be prepared for those visitors. Um, and that'll likely be a line item in your 2024 budget to buy a lot of things, if nothing else, porta potties and, and rent those. Um, some of those challenges that pop up and opportunities, it'd be nice to have a, a revenue source to pay for those. It's not necessarily property taxes. Um, and then community vitality. Um, you know, we have a beautiful downtown, but there's a lot of interest. Um, myself, revitalizing Waterbury, we've talked about it in expanding some of our beautification programs in downtown, some of the holiday decorations, some of the plantings uh, throughout the summer, and none of that is cheap or free. Um, so revenue source for some of those things is nice. Um, and then sometimes as a town you have some opportunities to make investments that generate some long-term savings, generate some efficiencies. Um, a great example I can give is that Waterbury, like every town in Vermont, is uh, wedded to really old software. Um, not really by choice, um, but just the way we interact with the state, we're sort of bound to this product. It's really cheap, um, and it works. But it's nearing the end of its life, and at some point we're going to have to make a pretty expensive switch. It's going to generate some long-term help for us, but the turnover is going to be difficult financially and operationally. Again, it'd be nice to have something to finance that turnover, which is going to help us in the long term. Uh, we can move on, Karen. Oh. Um, and just some of the other challenges, some of which I've mentioned, some of which I haven't. Um, affordable housing, big challenge. Um, I don't think um, I don't think it's going away anytime soon. So it'd be nice to have some funding to maybe um, keep keep trying to address that, um, as the town and EFUD had with 51 South Main Street, where they've tried so far. Uh, paving. So our paving budget is four hundred five thousand dollars. It's been that amount for three years. Uh, in that three years, asphalt's up forty percent. So we're we're doing what we can, but we're paving forty percent less. I'd love to grow that budget. I think a lot of people would love to grow that budget. Uh, the two old fire engines I talked about. Uh, policing is another issue I haven't talked about extensively in the past in public meetings, but I think it pertains to this. Our contract with the Vermont State Police expires in June of next year. Um, it's also about $400,000. It's a three-year contract, and essentially the rate was flat for three years. Um, I think the state views that contract as a good faith effort to help Waterbury, so I don't know that they're going to ask us for a giant increase. But the cost of policing has gone up a lot in three years for the state of Vermont, so they have every right to ask for a pretty meaningful increase. Um, and finally, um, that's a unique arrangement. And 
two things are, I don't want to say meaningful possibilities or strong possibilities, but they're, the odds of these things occurring are, are, are not high, but they're certainly not zero. And one is that um, the state police, I don't think anytime soon, but at some point could say with a long lead time that Waterbury, we think it's time to figure out a different option for policing and this model is tough for us because they have their own staffing struggles and policing Waterbury is tough. Uh, the other thing, the community might say that we need more police coverage. And if we're essentially paying $200,000 per year per officer and we want a third officer, um, here's a way to pay for it. And that's also a decision that um, could be in our future someday, depending on uh, what happens with public safety. Um, final thing is the flood. Um, after Irene, the town engaged with a hydrologist um, and a number of experts to try to figure out some flood mitigation projects. And the same effort is happening again. And that's going to be another long-term effort. In fact, I would guess for Waterbury, that's going to be a, an effort that essentially never ends in various, various forms. Um, so these are not things in our current budget or in real recent budgets. And, and again, without uh, substantially increasing the tax rate, here's a way to pay for some of these things and advance the town. Uh, we can go ahead, Karen. <laughs> and I just want to fast forward. Um, if we had a local option tax about what I think 2025 could look like in broad strokes. Um, so if we assume 650 grand, which essentially is no growth from what we would have today, which is a really conservative scenario, uh, Two things I think we could do that if I was a year ahead, I'd probably be talking about with the select board right now. And the first is um, we have some debt that's smaller, capital equipment, public works trucks. It doesn't have a ton left on it. Um, but if we paid 256 grand and killed that debt, we'd lower our tax rate by two cents. Two cents is pretty consistent with our annual increase. So in most years, that two cents gets us a flat budget. Um, and that two cents carries forward because that debt is then gone for all future years. Uh, the second thing I would tell them, and this is something that might be a feature of the 2024 budget, uh, depending on the vote on December 5th, is that the fire chief's truck for $370,000, and that's a rough number, <coughs> if we issue a 20-year bond at today's interest rates, uh, we essentially pay uh, about $500,000 in total debt service for that truck, so $130,000 in interest over the long term. We wouldn't need to do that. We could issue a very a short-term note, pay half of it, roll half of it over, do it again, and have it paid for in two years. If we did those two big things, uh, we'd still have $200,000 left over. Whether it's saved, whether it's applied to other items, uh, would be a decision made at that time. Um, but we could move the lever pretty significantly on two items, still have a whole lot of cash left over, um, and have a budget that has essentially a 0% tax increase. So that's, that's how I think about 2025 if the local option tax is in place. I think there's some great options. And I think if, I, I think if any manager tells any select board, the, budget I'm, the draft budget I'm delivering to you has a 0% tax increase. It's generally an easy conversation after that. And it's generally a relatively easy vote for the public. Uh, so that's my, that's my 2025 hope and, and preview if this all goes through. And that's, that's the end of my short presentation. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. First, any comments from the board? Okay. <coughs> Tom's presentation was very comprehensive. Good job, Tom. Thank you. Okay, let's open this up for questions uh, from the public. Comments? Oh. I'd like to be first, but I have a series of questions and then just stop. Uh, so, so Would you mind oh, just introducing yourself? Please. Sorry, sorry, I'm Tom and Laura. Can, uh, we can't hear you from back there, so it's so, It'd be helpful if you may come up better automation should be in the uh, approach for the use of this. Yeah. Great. Um, I have several questions, but I'll, I'll take them as we go. First, yeah, is it? Just introduce yourself. Please. I'm sorry, Tom Glore, Waterbury resident. Um, the um, 
the data you just presented. Um, a lot of us. Well, we can, but it, it's okay. I mean, I, I can remember it. I, it. Just is it accessible, or will it be posted after this? Yeah, yeah. I'll put it up online. Okay, all right. And then it has a lot of assumptions, right? Not not facts, right? So so good good assumptions. I'm not I'm not. Do you want to pull that one up? This one. So I took the 2022 numbers, which are available, took 18 years of history, whatever those rates of increase were, cut them and cut it in half. So 50% of historical growth, just to give some, some long-term projections about how this would move. And I can email you the spreadsheet if you want, and you can piddle around with it too. I would, I would be lost, but, um, but no, that's good. I mean, it's all, it's all analytics, it's good, it's data. It's just the assumptions I'm talking about are, are um, points in time, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff happens in sure. which I, I would say the flexibility in the use of the funds would be key, right? If this gets approved. But, and then what would be the process for introducing what the strategy would be for that specific year? Say in 25, you get approved, there's now funding that's uh, a resource to the town. Um, what is the process, or have you given some thought as to getting feedback because again like four or five very broad categories you're probably only going to have enough money to do maybe one one and a half that year um if you sure. chose some of the things you talked about the fire truck phenomenal i mean any way to to reduce yeah. property tax is a great <coughs> approach as far as i'm concerned but um how, what would be that? that sure yeah. so the thought is so local government does something called fund accounting. There's general fund, you know, water and sewer, EFUD are separate, but there's a general fund, there's capital funds. This would be a separate fund. So think of it as a separate bank account. So like an MR? Or so, so you do that so everything is just transparent. What goes, the revenue goes in and, and what goes out is, is all the approved expenditures. Um, so it would be a separate fund. It would be reported that way in the town report. So you could see... Um, both in the budget, but then in a separate snapshot for this fund, um, what the anticipated revenue for the up, for the current year would be, what would be the anticipated expenses, what's the difference, and then what's the what's the balance in the fund. And what some towns do, um, every town has a different strategy. Um, one town in Vermont didn't spend their local option tax for darn near a decade, and they had two big capital expenses, and they paid cash. I don't think that was the greatest idea at the time, since the cost of borrowing was so low, and, but so was the cost of so was the price, so was uh, what they earned in interest. So I think they were a little, a little spendthrift in that respect. Um, but the idea would be really simple, transparent, embedded in the town report. Okay, and then so that's the report that would be discussed at town meeting, yes. or and that would be for the next year's budget. Correct. Okay. Okay, and then is there a thought, um, uh, you know what, let me pause because there are probably other questions and I'll, I'll come back and ask them. How's that? Tom, um, maybe just to answer, probably, you know, because I know you're looking at what m people may think of good things to spend money on. You could always come to any of those select board meetings when we're in the budgeting process in January and when it comes to whether it be a library or paving or whatnot, you could discuss when, when that item's coming up for the board to discuss. And that, that would be probably an appropriate time to present maybe an idea or, you know, you could always give something, an idea to the town manager or, and or the select board. No, I appreciate it. I, I, I literally just want to know how, what that engagement would be, right? And when are the, op the opportunities like that are, are We want it to be as transparent as yeah, possible. Yeah. One, one other piece, Tom, just to elaborate a little more. The select board adopted a policy, not a law, about how to spend this. And so the voters at town meeting day have full authority to say whatever year, hey, we've got this local option tax with a bunch of cash sitting in the account. Our taxes are high. Let's, let's vote ourselves a tax cut or let's pay for this with it. There, there's, in the end, the voters have the final authority. Some towns have the policy embedded into their charter, then it's law. And then it's more rigid. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I mean, I understand it. I mean, I've been tracking your discussion on this and how that would play out. I just didn't know the, 
if that's going to be the process, that's fine. It feels like it's transparent. It, it's fine. It's just those categories are so broad that I looked at it as great because it's flexibility. But with anything resource, uh, you, you've just got to think priority, right? Yeah. And and you're probably not going to get in a specific year what you may have assumed. And again, I I'm not talking obviously uh, for or against. It's just the idea that. We're two years out, a year and a half out before getting any of this. Right. Uh, so the expectation is we're looking at two years of potential tax rate hikes, property tax, <coughs> right? Um, there, there's other people, like the legislature, who gets a vote, again, on terms of other taxes that are hitting. We're doing a reappraisal, too, right, at some point in time in the future that our costs. Um, so there, there are a lot of unknowns that are coming, right? And that's why I, I think it's important that this process is so transparent that mm -hmm. the public can look at it as, okay, look, you're, you're piling on right now. I'm not adverse to the, the idea of a local option tax, but the, the idea of option is kind of interesting, right? Is it really optional? <laughs> uh, it's, you can shop somewhere else, right, I guess, but um, online shopping, to me, I think is, that's a significant cost that no one's going to be anticipating. And based off the um, the showing tonight, right, and I know people get data different ways, like a lot of it's just looking at select board meetings and stuff, and Orca, shout out, very good. Um, but that's something I don't think a lot of people know right now, mm -hmm. that, that that that's going to apply to your internet purchases. So I don't know how you solve that in terms of participation, but it's probably something that when you have the meeting on the 5th, uh, I assume... The 5th the, the is a vote. The vote, I'm sorry. So the vote on the fifth, if you looked at those categories that you saw in there, there's no way of telling what would be internet related costs, right? Or right, revenue. that's correct. Yeah. So those are I, those are the assumptions I'm saying that could be higher, right? Mm -hmm. So and then I have one more question. But sure. um so so just a a, a um boundaries, right? Uh, town boundaries. And I'm not gonna bring up uh, other municipalities in this discussion. Um, <laughs> that's for another time. And again, I, I do uh, um, feel bad about lefty, so that's um, news, not not good news. Um, but, and get off that topic, the, um, so hardware stores in Waterbury, one sits on Route 100, one sits across the bridge. Does local option tax <coughs> apply to both? No. One on the other side of the bridge is only one. Yeah. So it's, I'm just saying you're going to affect, uh, I, I, w I would imagine at least one of those uh, property owners is going to say, look, I'm, you take, because I know that I work in Williston. Mm -hmm. There are times I don't go to things like Home Depot because of the local option tax, right? And I get a, a darn pretty good discount as a mm -hmm. veteran. So, but I look at it and try to keep my, my business local. Uh, in town, but that to me would be a bit of a discriminator. It's only one percent, but you know, yeah. it's uh, you're correct. Something, something to look at. That, that's mm -hmm. the thing. And and I only because you said you haven't got a lot of feedback from businesses. That type of a business, I think, would be something to talk to you. Maybe engage them direct. I don't know. But all right, I'll Thank sit you. and listen. Thank you. Yeah, Teresa. Hi there. Thank you. Um, it, it's a little difficult to hear, but um, I just wanted to uh, give my two cents and appreciate the the um, staff and board's consideration of this local option tax. Um, I agree with it, what people are saying in terms of um, there's there's you know, a lot of different options for how it can be used, but we, we won't even have an opportunity to, um, to have those discussions unless, unless we pass this. And so um, uh, I am very much in favor of this, and um, there are so many surrounding towns that uh, have this. We, we are at an economic disadvantage by not, not having this. And, I'm not sure if it was something that, that Tom mentioned, but you know the part that goes to the 
The part that stays with the state goes to fund the pilot program, which we will also benefit from um, because it will increase the pilot payments. So um, I'm definitely in favor of this and appreciate you bringing it forward for a public vote. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Teresa. Yeah, Bill, hold up. Good presentation, Tom. Thank you. Um, I'm Bill Shepelek from Waterbury. Um, <clears throat> I support this charter uh, proposal. I support the local option tax. Um, and I was going to mention what Teresa just did. I was going to ask Tom, I assume the 650000 was the 70% share. Correct. And the 30% that uh, of the... So for every $100 of the local option tax, the local community gets $70, and $30 goes into the state's coffers, and they take a little bit of that for administration because they do all the administration of this. It's a tax that the state collects, and the municipality doesn't. The state uh, sends the money to the town. Um, but as Teresa indicated, uh, the town is one of the larger uh, recipients of pilot funding in the state, uh, and and we will get uh, a little bit more from that source as well. So uh, we'll we'll get a bigger impact than some communities that have this that don't have a big state presence. And, um, and I, I can enunciate on that a little bit. Um, so the pilot payment of lieu of taxes, the state takes this pot of funds and pays towns based on the insurance values of state property in their borders. Um, insurance values, because I'm sure at some point a smart lister said, hey, there's a piece of state, you know, there's a state courthouse in, in my town, and I can just value it at five million bucks, and it's normally one, no one's gonna care, and I'll get more. <laughs> um, so it's, it's insurance values. We budgeted this year to get $360,000 from the pilot payment. Pilot came in a week or so ago at 400K, so that's great. Um, you can look at each town's share of the pilot payment, and some have no state property and get none. Um, but based on that, using the $650,000 number, uh, we get another $15,000 a year in pilot payment. So there's that other side effect. Good. So. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I know this is about the charter and about should we have the tax. I uh, couldn't say it better than Teresa did. We don't get to think about how we're going to use it unless we have it. Um, just a couple thoughts, and I, I heard what you said about long-term debt, um, and that, you know, four or five percent is not the good old days that I dealt with for the last 20 years, which was, you know, two percent. And, you know, Tom and I had talked many times when he first came that, you know, it was crazy not to issue debt to buy these things. I would say, however, that even at four or five or six percent, that's that's kind of back to what traditionally were interest rates when I came into the business in the in the early '80s. So I would suggest that look towards how you can spend the money to reduce taxes through maybe operating expenses or on capital projects or capital. Uh, uh, or equipment purchases that are maybe, you know, pickup trucks and small vehicles, things that are going to be paid off in five, maybe even eight years, like a, a, a dump truck. I think we're on a five to seven year turnaround on those. Things like fire trucks at $30,000 or buildings or highway graders and things like that. Um, my personal feeling is that not only does <coughs> debt uh, it's a, it's a way to even out the payments over, the, over time, but it's also a way to ensure that the people who are using the, the improvement pay for it. So if you pay for that fire truck that's going to last 20 years in the first two years, and then it's free for everybody, people who move in 10 years from now are getting service from that vehicle, and they're not paying for it. And I know you're going to, we've got a lot of fire trucks to buy, and if you buy every one of them on cash, then everyone is going to pay their share of it. But I'm not sure you can do that with the number of 
high-priced vehicles that we have with two fire departments and the highway fund. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying factor that into your equation because having people pay their fair share is in, important. Uh, I did have a question about the first uh, article and the mm -hmm. town manager uh, and the hiring and the, the department head thing, Tom. Um, you used the example of the public works director. And I, I'm not trying to carry Tom Glore's banner here, but you know, the public works director is, a, is an EFUD employee. The public works director is an EFUD employee. And the chain of command goes you know, up the chain from the public works director to you to the EFUD board. And you know, we've got an arrangement where we have one public works director. Uh, he gets paid by one municipality, uh, keeps track of his time. The other municipality pays that back. But I, I, it's just a wrinkle that, <laughs> yeah, you know, just don't say it's really smooth and easy because it's, it's, it's not here. That's all. We know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Other comments? Can I still don't hear us online? There's got to be questions, right? We have at least 10 people. Yeah, we got <laughs> 10 people right here. We got another six online. But, uh, it's such a good job. I do have a question. Nobody else. Come on back up. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, do come um, here. I think that's why they're having trouble. Yeah, they can't hear. Oh, oh, okay. Um, so I'll use my former self voice. And the people uh, are shy about asking questions. There's candy. Oh, trick or treat. Yeah. Are, are there any um, unknown requirements that the state's going to levy on us now as a <coughs> chartered town? It, have we looked at this to understand what? You, you mentioned policing, right? And I, I know that's the purview of, of the town or municipality, I guess, at this point. Um, are those things that, I mean, is there a statute out there that says a town versus a municipality is responsible for doing X, Y, and Z? Do no. we have other positions that have to be hired? No. No, no other responsibilities come with this. Okay. Um, that was it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Take your candy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, if you, are we making it? If you speak, you get a piece of candy. <laughs> Is Teresa still online? No, no, she didn't get her candy. No. But she did speak earlier uh, and uh, suggested that this would be <coughs> potentially our one good shot at getting this. So it is important that we get any concerns met uh, at this meeting or the next meeting uh, before the vote. So I would invite anyone that does have concerns uh, to please address them now so we can address them before it gets to vote. Um, and uh, she did have some concerns about uh, uh, us defining how we would spend the money. I think we have addressed that while setting some broad parameters uh, we have set them that the uh, select board would address uh, the policy and uh, have public input on how the funds would be spent on an annual basis. So, I don't know if we've got more discussion on this. Yes, Alyssa. I didn't know if Karen or Tom could just speak to the voting process for anyone who is here or might see this <coughs> later. Um, you can get a ballot now. They're available in my office. I can mail them. You can stop by and vote Monday through Friday to 4.30. Um, otherwise, I intend to have the um, this room utilized on December 5th, so folks from 7 to 7. So there won't be a meeting or discussion on December 5th. That day is strictly <coughs> for voting. So just to highlight, you can vote now. You can vote early. You don't have to wait until December 5th if you don't want. And if you want to vote by mail, you contact Karen for a ballot. Mm -hmm. yes, um, and her info is on the town website. 
And if any other concerns uh, come to you over the next week, we will be opening up uh, the meeting on November 6th with uh, another informational public forum on the same issue. Uh, we can address them then. What's that date? I'm sorry. Uh, next Monday, uh, November 6th. And then after that, voting will be open as of now, right through uh, 7 o'clock on December 5th. So I, I would say that, um, and I may just be the ignorant party in this one, but I didn't know that the, the meeting in December was not going to be an informational. <coughs> it's going to be just a vote. So it's up and down vote for those two articles. No presentation, no questions. It's Australian ballot. Yeah, yeah that's it's it's just right. Okay. It's an Australian ballot. Uh, voting will be open from 7 until 7. No. Okay. And then we'll be meeting. That's Monday, right? No, it's Tuesday. That's Tuesday. That's Tuesday, right. You'll know the results that night. Okay. And Tom, that, that process is dictated to us by state law. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine with it. I just didn't. It, it just, based off the turnout today, it's just, it's, it never ceases to amaze me that we're making strategic decisions with a very small subset right now. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I don't want to get my soapbox, but an informed <laughs> citizen should vote, right? <laughs> Everybody should vote, but it's really important to be informed. So, um, so the next meeting, I don't know, that, I know I, I uh, did the ORCA thing, got on, saw your last like board meeting about trying to advertise a little bit more that this was happening. I did see the front page form, I did see some Things actually, another shout out with the, um, the round ballot. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all good. It just, uh, and it could be the public is very informed and everybody's on board with this, and I think it's going to be quite popular. Um, but that piece, I guess, of how the funds will be used is, I think, where the discussion is going to be. Right. Well, good. I hope everyone heard you. Uh, Danny, you have something to say? Um, yeah, we're just going to. Um, Take what Tom said, and um, you know there will be the informational meetings. There'll be more out on the front porch forum, hopefully, you know, covering the roundabout as well. So, um, folks who feel informed and you know understand via the what's been published, great. But also, we do encourage you know anyone who might be watching or listening to come and ask questions or send an email. You know, you can always give a call or send an email to ask a specific question if you have one. Um, and then I know Karen's going to publish the slides as well, so those are going to be available to everybody, um, you know, to everybody in the public, whether you're able to attend the meeting or not. And then um, the last thing is more of a question, since we will likely put, you know, more info about the next meeting coming up, maybe it, we can even be more clear. Um, I didn't go back and review the other posting, but even more clear about which is a meeting and what's just a vote, so we can review that language. and. If it isn't clear in the language that's going out, we can uh, clarify it that way. So, Lisa, you had your hand up. I just have two quick questions. Um, will the slides from tonight be with tonight's minutes, probably? Um, I'll put them on the news section, I think. Lisa, I already made a note to set up the <coughs> Okay, very good. I'll put them on the news and I'll put them in the minutes, but I'll, I'll try to put them on the home page. Okay, so because I can link to that. That would be, I'd be happy yeah. to do that. And one other quick question was, has anybody voted yet? Yes. Yes. How, how many voters have you have you actually had yet? Has it been um, very many? I've had three. Okay. <laughs> I'm just curious. Technically, I've only had two, and I've mailed one. Okay. <laughs> just curious. When did voting start? Yeah. Oh. That day when that that one guy came in for the ballot. <laughs> um, I don't know. It was late last week. I got the ballots ready. <laughs> okay. Look. Just if I could make a little commentary. Uh, and, and I'd say this both personally as, 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 as a select board member. I'm not the hugest one that m likes to see m big increases in, in taxes or any increases in taxes. And when the local options tax was first presented, I had my second doubts about it. But after doing research, and maybe this is just to educate some, some other folks, is we're surrounded by a lot of towns that also have local options tax. 
you know, Stowe, Williston, et cetera, the places where, where people shop, you know, they're all going to have options tax. It's a very interesting one that Tom brought up, the hardware store right across the river. That's kind of a, an anomaly, but I do think people, I, I used to always not go to Williston for that same, for just like you said, the same purpose. I didn't want to pay that extra 1%, but you, sometimes you become immune to the 1%, and you, I like to shop things in town, but there are a lot of things that you can't buy here in town. And you're going to wind up getting, you know, we all get hit by the, you know, the Amazons, the Cabela's, you know, everyone's charging, you know, taxes, you know, that's all. And I think that, I think that's the wild card is we don't know how much income is going to be brought in by that. And I would like to see that there's a lot. It, if there was a real effect on our citizens and our businesses, I'd probably be opposed to the, to to the local options tax, but I have become a convert. Uh, I think it's a reasonable way to help fund government. I think it's an important way that we could minimize people's tax increases. We do still ha we still have a lot of seniors here in this town who are you know on fixed incomes, and you know they really can't you know you know any increases in their taxes are going to hurt them in, in the pocketbook. So. I'm a convert. I think uh, taxes have become a big reason why, you know, I think it's not our local taxes, it's really more of our uh, school taxes that, and I'm not going to get on a soapbox about that, but I think this is a reasonable thing because other towns have it. It's a good way for us to fund uh, things that we need to do in town or, or minimize taxes, that's all I have to say. Thanks, Mike. One last time. Yeah, Bill. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure, I, I think I understand, but when, when to the discussion a minute ago that was being had about, uh, you know, the impact of Internet sales, uh, I mean, Tom talked about the fact that this would apply. But remember, it, it applies to Internet sales that the sales tax already applies to. So in other words, if... If you're buying something and there's no sales tax because it doesn't apply, then you're not going to pay the 1%. But if you, if you go online and you buy something and you're paying the state sales tax now because they've all agreed and there's been congressional action and everything else, you're just going to pay that 1% extra. It's not like this is something that mm. is a bolt out of the blue and it's causing internet sales to be taxable. It, if it applies now uh, to what you're buying, if you're paying the regular state sales tax, it'll be 1% higher. It's not going to go from 0 to to uh, 7%. So I just wanted to make sure that we were aware of that. And, and you know, the the hardware store across the across the river yeah it you know unfortunately there's <coughs> one on both sides you can't you can't solve every reality that's out there i mean the the people who do business on the new hampshire border do this all the time and it's a lot more than one percent and yeah. somehow they they manage to to make it and uh you know the there's plenty of services that waterbury provides to folks outside this community, um, and this happens everywhere, in St. Albans, in Montpelier, in, in Barry and Burlington, there's a municipal overburden that the bigger communities that have the services, that have uh, places to shop, and uh, not-for-profits, uh, which don't pay taxes here, and people get services. So this, I think it's a way to kind of broaden the tax base and get our fair share of things that we're missing out on now as well because of how the tax structure is is set up it it's nothing is going to be perfectly fair 100 percent of the time that's just life so i think this is a good thing for the community and i hope that it will pass thanks bill did have one alibi. <laughs> uh, not to, not to respond. That's why we're here. We no. want to hear everybody's. Not comments. to respond to Mr. Sheplock. That's not. It, to be clear, I am not adverse 
at all to the local option tax. I'm just, I, my statement's more about the knowledge out there and the lack of engagement at times with the community. That's not your responsibility, that's our, the people, responsibility, right? So I think you've done everything you needed to get the information out. Um, it's just, these are things that, you know, when they hit next year, um, people have short memories. So then it's, oh, there's a 1% tax, what happened? You know, well, we talked about this for two, you know, two years. So the last thing was the 1% is set. Right? Is that a tax that does not get raised? It, there is no raised. local so uh, ability to change that. The state doesn't change that. That's a one percent because yes. sales tax does change, right? So the state could change it. The state yeah. could change it. Well, the okay. yeah, the legislature could change it in principle. Mm -hmm. Okay. But okay. It wouldn't be. But it's town. not low. It's okay. Town, okay. It's not our jurisdiction. Good to go. Thanks. It's not likely they're going to change it. Because yeah. likely a lot of them don't like it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to raise it. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. That was my final. Well, we don't know. <laughs> Come back again next week uh, with more. It'd be good. Look forward to it. Maybe we should have free pizza to get people down to get the work out. <laughs> There's that. Well, there's a bag of candy. You know, if you want it. <laughs> candy didn't. Yeah. Did. Candy well, we didn't advertise. You should have said there was candy. Good point. Should have been warned. Mm hmm Well, it's cabbage night. So there you go. I, uh, I looked while I was in the store. I was like, should I bring a cabbage to celebrate? <laughs> huh. Good point. Um, I don't know that we've got any more business in front of us. So do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We are adjourned until next Monday.